Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I am here with a pattern test that I have been holding on to forever. I'm so glad to finally be able to share this with you. So this is a new itch to stitch pattern. It's the Azure um, top and dress and we tested this back in the beginning of December. It was right after the POAS um, jacket came out so she wanted to hang on to it and wait till after um, Christmas and decided to push it until after the new year so that's why you're seeing it today. But this from the minute I saw this, the line drawings, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to try this one. Okay, so let's talk about the pattern a little bit. So it's a, a blouse um, or dress. Obviously, the only difference is that the blouse stops, you know, right here, and the dress just continues on into a skirt. But um, it features a yoke, and so the bodice gets gathered into the yoke, but it's got this beautiful front yoke detail, and it's going to be really hard to see in my version, and I really apologize because my fabric's too busy. It's also sitting on Lena weird. Um, but it's got this beautiful yoked area here that comes up and then goes around. And so this, the front gets gathered up into this, which gives the bust shaping. Um, so you could easily do like a contrasting fabric here in the center front and into these yoke pieces, which I think would be really cool if you did even something, um, I don't know, like pin tucks would be really cool or something with some texture would be really beautiful. Um, but yeah, you get your shaping from the uh, gathers that go in here into the bust, and then you get your shaping in the waist and the sleeves from shirring. So I think it's, uh, like seven, was it seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, it doesn't matter. Seven or eight lines of shirring <laughs> there to give you your waist shaping. And then also here at the cuff to give you kind of the um, a little bit more dramatic sleeve, kind of that balloon sleeve, and it comes in at the cuff. Um, okay, the recommended fabrics for this are anything with drapes. So your rayons, um, like your rayon chalets, you could even use a, a twill, I guess, if you wanted to, rayon crepe. Um, any kind of silk, lightweight silks, so your crepe de chines, your charmeuses, cotton lawn you could even use and get a little bit different look. You want, when you're doing any kind of shirring though, you do want um, lighter weight fabrics because otherwise, um, if it gets too heavy, you won't be able to get that shirring effect. You may be able to use a really lightweight linen, but it'd have to be pretty lightweight linen, um, I think, to get the shirring in correctly. I just love this so much. So I used this Art Gallery Rayon Shelly that I had bought um, back in August when I went down for my in-person um, shopping fabric shopping trip. I got this in Evansville at Let's Sew. Um, I've seen this, in fact, I've got this in the uh, kind of this teal colorway. It's the background is kind of the teal color that I just haven't done anything with yet. But oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. This is all of my winter capsule colors that I'm working with. So you're gonna see this top a lot. Um, it's got a single button closure that's up here. I don't know if you can see that. I used this yellow one that I had for my stash and it was just a, a vintage button. I just had the one, but I thought the yellow pulled out some of the yellow in the print really nicely. So I popped that on there as well. Um, I made the size eight with a D cup, which is what I make in all of my um, itch to stitch patterns. And this worked out beautifully. A lot of times I'll shorten her sleeves by an inch. I didn't on this one only because I wanted to make sure I had enough blue sawn effect. And because it does cinch in at the cuff, I didn't, I wasn't worried about it like hanging over my hands or anything because it stops there at the cuff. So I would just have like a little extra blue sawn. So I did leave the sleeves alone, made zero alterations to this pattern. Eight with a D cup as is works beautifully. I cannot say enough good things about this pattern. <laughs> I mean, it's just so on trend with the shirring. Um, I think it's good for winter or spring. I think you could play around with the sleeves if you wanted a shorter sleeve. I think a flutter sleeve would be lovely. You could just cut these sleeves shorter um, and not have the shirring if you didn't want. Um, but yeah, I think you could just have a lot of fun with the sleeves. I've seen a lot of the testers have done some gorgeous dress versions that are, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to have a dress out of this next, I think. <laughs> Um, I may wait till the spring though. I think that might be a fantastic spring dress um, in a chalet. And I've got some in my stash. So yes, I'll definitely be revisiting that. Um, it's just such, it's such a great pattern. So if you are starting to sew 
for if you like to sew ahead a season ahead and you'll be sewing for spring or even winter I mean I, I'm gonna be wearing this all winter it's all in my winter capsule colors I definitely I highly recommend this pattern and per all things love notions it's just drafted beautifully um, the instructions are wonderful she's got a tutorial for how to do the shirring if you're unsure um, it kind of depends on if you have it's your bobbin it comes all down to the bobbin case if you have a drop down bobbin I think because um, it's all about the tension in the bobbin so if your bobbin drops down into your machine like from the top I think it's all about how you wind it um, you know whether that be my machine or by hand and playing around with that where is if your bobbin goes into a bobbin case and then goes into your machine like mine does um, so a lot of times that's like into the front of the machine um, it you can adjust your actual bobbin case um, and I just I actually have multiple bobbin cases and so I have marked one with an S for shirring um, and I messed around with it because I didn't want to mess I mean you're messing around with tension with a bobbin case that can get iffy but I'm doing so much shirring um, all the all along I mean for quite a while that I just went ahead and designated one of my little bobbin cases as a shirring bobbin case so um, yeah that's what I've done but I have played around with the tension screws there on that bobbin case again mine's the one that the bobbin you put the bobbin into the bobbin case and then it goes into the machine I would not mess around with a bobbin case that was in a drop-down machine that would be a nightmare don't do that <laughs> but I think that just comes down to making sure you're winding your bobbin tight enough um, without being too tight so you do want some stretch on there but again she's got a tutorial on there I have a tutorial on my channel for shirring I'll leave that linked below or above below whatever <laughs> for you to have a look if that's something that's a little scary but it really I mean she puts it all in order of how you should do everything so that everything um, finishes up all nice and neat um, and yeah and you end up with a really a really nice blouse now the only thing that I would say would make this more of an intermediate pattern is that you're sewing into corners for this yoke piece here and then also at the corner right here um, you know she's of course got wonderful instructions but that is something you need to interface you know you're putting in some stay stitching there because you have to clip into those corners to get everything you know nice nicely done however I will show you the inside of it hold on okay however I mean, I'm able to, I was able to finish off everything with a serger, even on those corner points there. So um, the back yoke is also nicely, I finished this off, um, she has you finishing it off the burrito method um, and walks you through exactly how to do that. Um, yeah, and even walks you through, so a lot of times when I've done shirring, you hem first and then you sew up the side seam, which is a little backwards, but she has you doing, just because it's easier with the shirring to have things hemmed first, but she has you finishing off the hem to a certain point, and so then you can finish that seam and then do up your hem, so that your hem goes, you know, down over that side seam or that underarm seam that's there. So I thought that that, I mean, that was a, a nice, a really nice finish because that's always bothered me with other shirred um, patterns. But yeah, it's the same with the hem on the bottom of the shirt as well. You're able to do, to do all that. And actually she has you finish up one side and then you shirt all the way across from the front to the back, um, back and forth. And then you do the second side seam just to make it a little bit easier. And I think it looks lovely. Yeah, so it's shirt across one side seam and then you close up the side seam on the other one. And here, let's turn it right. While I have it off, Lena, I'll show you back the front again. But I just think this is such an on-trend top. The shirring at the waist gives you nice definition. So it's kind of that boho feel without it being overwhelming or make it feel like I'm wearing a tent, um, which some tops can do with that kind of feel. But I still find it to be, I don't know, feel classic a little bit at the same time. So I'm excited to wear this um, and I'll be wearing mine into the spring as well. But there's my little vintage button. Isn't that cute? I just had that in a, in a bucket of um, buttons there. But yeah, that is it. That And look at that fabric. Isn't that fabric just gorgeous? Let's, let's take a moment to look at that fabric because it is beautiful. Okay, <laughs> that's our gallery print. All right, so there you have it. That is my Azure Top from Itch to Stitch News Pattern. It is on sale for the first week. Um, so a few dollars off if you wanna go ahead over there. I have an affiliate link, so I do make a small commission if you buy from the link that is down below in the description box. So just wanna be on the up and up with that and be clear with that. So that's all down below. 
you know, if I can, if they still have the fabric, if I can find the fabric, I'll link it as well. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this one and are getting into sewing. Happy New Year. My first, I guess not my first video. Sunday was my first video into the new year, but that was just Vlogmas, so happy new year. <laughs> Here's to a wonderful 2022. May we all get all of the sewing in that we desire. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I'll be back on Friday with a lookbook of my son's, um, the three things that I made him before Christmas. So two jackets and a pair of pants. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. Have a wonderful Tuesday and I will see you next time. Bye.